Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts. I'm Nicole and this is episode 10. If you're new here, welcome. I am Nicole and the channel's Professor Pearl because Pearl because I like knitting and Professor because I'm a math education professor located in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States and the channel is mostly about knitting and occasionally other crafts. So today we'll be mostly knitting with a little bit of Legos. <laughs> Before we hop into finished objects and chatting and things, I wanted to announce a winner from the last podcast and the giveaway was a set of these sort of pearl they're called pearl strings from mini and pearl but they are basically extenders like cords that you can you know, put your needle through pull through and put your sleeves on hold or something like this and so my friend Kelly has a yarn store called Le Mouton Rouge Knittery, and she donated these for the podcast, and there's a set of them, and so that's the giveaway, and I just went through the comments of last episode. There were 45 comments. I used a random number generator, and the winner is Claudia Hass. Please email me at professorpearlpodcast at gmail.com. And anybody can email me there just to say hi. And also you can find me as Prof Pearl on Instagram and on Ravelry. And other kind of like, sort of like announcements. I got two more. One is that since the last episode, I put out a new video, which is about a, a local yarn store called Wall of Yarn. It's not local to me but it is local to my in-laws. And so I was able to visit there and interview one of the owners, Jeffrey from Wall of Yarn in Freeport, Illinois. And if you're into Scandinavian inspired knitting, color work, rustic yarn, I think that would be a really fun interview to check out. I would love for that video to get some attention to amplify their business. So yeah, if you have a chance, I'll link that below. Okay. The other sort of thing I want to hop into is I've been really thinking about things that have been giving me joy or do give me joy and things I miss. So things that give me joy is sweater knitting. I'll talk about the sweater I'm wearing soon. <laughs> and things I miss have been like knit nights. Um, my husband is also a knitter, Kyle, and we were very active in our local knit night before the pandemic. They would meet in a pub, which I no longer do. Um, we just, we were really active in our knitting group and I really miss it. And occasionally that group meets on Zoom, but it's on a Sunday night or something when it's like full on family time for us. So it's been hard to connect. So I've been really missing like knitting in community knit nights. So sweater love, missing knit nights. And the fact that this channel has a Zoom account that is supported by you through Ko-Fi, I really thought, you know what, let's do something. So here's my idea. <laughs> and I wanna put it up at the front so everybody can hear it. I would love to have a night that's called Sweater Show and Share, where we show up and you either show a sweater you're knitting on, or you show a sweater that you've made that you're really proud of, and we meet on Zoom. Now here's the part that I think would be really awesome, which is I need you to fill out um, a Google form that I have listed below, <laughs> which is, I would love for you to fill out the Google form. It's a link in the, if there's a down bar, bar, click that. All the show notes are there, but also th there'll be a Google form for you to pick, fill out. And I'd love to have your email so you could get on a list. And also it's a survey for me to know like how we're feeling about this, but I would love for the sweater show and share to be like recorded on Zoom that I could then upload to YouTube as a video because 
I love watching like podcasts when it's like people are showing their finished sweaters. I love the chatter too, but like I love the finished sweaters. So I was just thinking it'd be really fun to have a group of us show our sweaters and then record that. And then I would shut the recording off and then the rest could just be us chatting and stuff and the chatting wouldn't be recorded. But um, yeah, I thought it'd be kind of, kind of fun to do. Just as a side note, I have a four-year-old and she goes to preschool and her favorite day is Fridays because Friday is show and share at school. She loves show and share. She'll like, we'll wake up in the morning and she's like, is it show and share? And so that's why I'm using the language show and share, <laughs> but sweater show and share. So an adult show and share, if you will. But you can show children's sweaters, like any sweater that you want to share, I think would be amazing. And I think it would be inspiring. And so full on teacher mode here, I'm going to model what I imagine uh, that you would just tell us what the sweater you're wearing or you're knitting. So I'll show you the sweater I'm wearing or you're knitting. So it would be like this, I was talking about the sweaters, but just less me, more you. <laughs> so this sweater I have shown on the channel already, and I'm actually going to probably model this poorly. It's the yarn I bought from Naughty Lamb, and it's a French brand, uh, a French business, and I, I don't remember the name. I think the name meant like sunrise or something like this. The sweater I'm wearing is the Diaphanous Raglan by Jessie May, and it's held with a single and a mohair for this part. Just the mohair on the sleeves and then single mohair here. The sweater gives three different options for sleeves. So this is a, I think it was called a bishop sleeve. There was a bell sleeve option, which I would love to do this again in a bell sleeve maybe, but also I just love this sleeve so much I probably would do the sleeve again. And then there was a short sleeve kind of flutter. I really need to knit the sweater again. It is comfortable. It's so comfortable. I Maybe like when on the screen, it just kind of looks like a plain sweater and I suppose it sort of is, but I just, it just, the de finishing details on it, like the fact that this is a different fabric than this and like, that center decrease there, I just, I, I, it's my favorite thing I've made. And I, the color choice is just wonderful for me. And I actually have the yarns here. I'll show those yarns a little later, but basically this was held with this. And I'll look up what the yarn was and link it below as well. So that those were there. Anyway, I just, I love this sweater. There's so many amazing sweaters, so I always wanna knit something new, but also like when you make something you love so much, that's, I just, I think I would love to knit this again. So that's what I'm imagining for sweater show and share. A lot of that, hopefully you would do better than me and remember the yarn name. <laughs> okay, so I'll hop into finished objects now. Okay, since the last episode, which was two weeks ago, I'm going to try to do this every two weeks, I finished a beret out of Clinton Hill cashmere. And of course, it's not going to show up that well right now on the screen because this is black. The colorway is called Onyx. So some people also made Clinton Hill Jacqueline Berets is part of a make-along for this channel that's going on right now called uh, Books and Berets, where you can knit or crochet or make any beret and read any book. Use the hashtag Books and Berets Mal or on Instagram or enter your finished object on Ravelry. And both of those will enter you for prizes, a $25 gift card to Shelby in the bookstore is one prize and the other prize is a kit, a cashmere kit for the Jacqueline Beret from Clinton Hill. And so some people had finished this beret before me and they had said, oh, it looks kind of small. And so I got nervous and it does look really small, but goodness, does it fit perfect. It makes me wonder if berets are just, they look small because it is so good. It looks very tiny, but 
it's everything. I love it so much. I loved the meaning behind it. And I have a video about the Jacqueline Beret on this channel. I'll link it below. And so it's a very special beret. So I was just excited to knit it. Then it was my first time knitting with Clinton Hill Cashmere. I've knit with cashmere blends before, but I'm pretty sure this is my first time knitting with 100% cashmere and I can't even. It's like really expensive, so not realistic for me to knit all the time, but also like so amazing. I have to keep doing it. It's so good. And after I finish this, I just love it. Cashmere is no joke though, because this is really hot. <laughs> Like this is warm, like this is a warm, I love it so much I've been wearing it around the house and sometimes I get a little warm and I have to take it off. Um, it's just, I'm gonna knit another one of these. It's so good. So that was my first finished object and that's all I knit. I would, I would be pleased cause it's just so good. But I did finish the second beret. And this one is much larger than what I'm wearing. And that was on purpose. So first of all, this pattern is the second beret here. This pattern is called the Best Beret by James N. Watts. And the pattern comes with two different silhouettes, a classic silhouette, which I think is more this size and more of a dramatic silhouette. And I wanted to do the dramatic silhouette because I just wanted to do it. I wanted to use up some of the wonderful yarn I had. And I, the other reason why I wanted to knit the dramatic silhouette is I was scared based on how small this is that this would turn out small at the classic because when I looked at pictures of the classic beret online, some of them did look small and I did make several modifications to this pattern. One modification was the pattern calls for worsted and this yarn is not worsted, it's DK. And so I thought if I did more of a dramatic silhouette, it would come up somewhere in between dramatic and classic. It ended up turning out very dramatic, but <laughs> the other modification I did is this pattern is written in a way, it's a paper pattern, so I won't give it away, but it's written in a way where you can't see the increases and decreases, which is really cool. And when you think about a felted beret, you really can't see the increases and decreases. So that's, I think, genius. <laughs> but I actually wanted to see the increases because to me, sometimes when you can see a line on increases, it gives it a little bit of structure to it. Like it looks more structured. And since I knew this was gonna be oversized, I, I don't know, I wanted something like that. I actually liked the look of increases, so I did modify two things. One is I modified this from Morsa to DK and the second was I added decrease lines so you can see like where I decreased and or increased. And the reason, the kind of other reason why I did it so you could see where I increased is if you don't do increases consistently, you needed to put stitch markers in. And I didn't really want to do that at first. So Anyway, so this is a gift. So Shelby from Shelby in the Bookstore, if you're not following her on YouTube, you should. I really enjoy following her on YouTube and she doesn't talk about knitting. She's not a knitter, she talks about books, but I really enjoy it. And so she's not a knitter. So I wanted to make her a beret for the Books and Berets make along and purple's her favorite color. So this yarn, I don't even know. I'm like so excited about berets. I forgot to talk about the yarn. This yarn is Chelsea Lux in a colorway called Sugar Plum. So it's coming up pretty accurate right here, but I would say in person, it seems very tonal, which in that way made Sugar Plum seem nice because it's like purpley, but like just a to tone of pink. Okay, I'll take this off so that you can see the way this fits me. And I kind of feel bad trying on something that I'm giving to somebody, but okay. <laughs> so this looks nice with this sweater. <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, so this is my other beret. I saw a picture on Instagram that was like ways to style beret. And it was like five different ways. And I only remember two of them. So one is the one ear out and the one ear in. And the other is, I guess I could do it with mine instead of with the gift. <laughs> the other one is with two ears in. Like this. I think it looks really good. And when I put it on like this the other day, I had this like moment where this is where sort of my professor life and knitting life like intersect. So, and this is a little bit oversharing, but as a researcher, my main, like my main job as a professor is teaching and research. And as a researcher, I study like, cognition around negative numbers. So the ways children and adults think about negative numbers. It's like my main thing I study. And an influential like researcher, like a very influential like theorist in my life is Jean Piaget. And I have no idea if you'd know who he is. If you're a teacher, you might you might know him for radical constructivism, like as a learning theory. If you're a researcher like me, like you for sure would know if you study children's thinking. And Anyway, he has some iconic pictures where he wears a black beret like this. And when I put it on like this, I was like, oh my gosh. Like the math education nerd in me was just like, I was like, I, I love this so much that they have a black beret. Like Piaget. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. I'll, I'll hope maybe I'll find a picture of him on the internet and pop him in here so you can understand. Okay, and around books around that, just a sidebar, there's a local bookstore in Portland called Powell's Books, and if you're ever visiting Portland, you should totally go there. It's like a city block wide, actually it might be more than that, it's huge, and it has several stories and they sell both new and used books. It's so amazing. And my favorite section in Powell's is a psychology section, which is the purple, it's color coded, so it's the purple section. And one of my favorite things to do is go to Powell's, go to the purple psychology section and try to find like a really old Piaget book. Like sometimes they'll sell like Piaget books from like the 50s and 60s and they'll sell them for like three or four dollars there and they'll sometimes be in that section and that's what I buy when I go to Powell's. So anyway, <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend a beret, 10 out of 10 recommend going to Powell's if you're in Portland. <laughs> Portland, Oregon. Sorry, there's lots of Portlands. <laughs> okay, so this is a little, I might just leave this on. This is a little like kind of heavy of a, like a beret focus on finished objects. <laughs> the two other finished objects I finished fall into the crafts part of this pod, podcast, which, you know, are Legos a craft? I don't know, but I like need to talk about it because I had so much fun. So Santa brought Matilda, that's my four-year-old, a frozen Lego set for Christmas and we were in Illinois. And so Santa brought this and Matilda wanted to put it together. And you know, like it was almost 800 piece Lego set and like in my mind, I was like, this is a terrible idea because we're gonna lose some pieces while we're traveling, but we did it. We put together the entire Lego set while traveling about hotel stays all, all over. Like we put together this 800 piece Lego set and travel with it. We have to undo it so we can fly home back to Oregon. So we're back here in Oregon and we'll put together again. So it's been put together twice. Matilda really does help. She doesn't do it. She couldn't do it by herself. It's much too far, um, much too big of a project um, for her at this point where she is age-wise, but it's fun for us to do together and she loves playing with it. And so it's this collective thing. I'll put a picture here. It was just a joy and we we're still, she's still enjoying playing with it. Then I wanted to do something special with her. So I had another Lego set that she had got for her birthday in November that we hadn't put together yet which was the, it's called like 
friend's baking competition Lego set. And so we did that for four hours. It's not a Lego set that should take four hours, but Matilda's four, so it takes, and she did most of it. Like I helped, but she did most of it. So it just, yeah, it took us like basically the entire day until nap time. And she was focused on it. And one thing that was unique about the friend's Lego set is that it comes with these QR codes that you can, that there's little videos about the friends, Lego people. <laughs> I'm told to love those. They were only like a minute or two minutes long. But they sort of kind of tell the narrative of the Lego set, like the story, like this is a baking competition. I, I mean, we watched these videos on repeat. <laughs> so anyway, I'll pop some pictures in and they were a joy. And I think Legos are sort of like, it's fascinating because the more I do them, the more I want to do them. It's, I guess it's sort of like knitting. <laughs> I just can't wait to do the next Lego set with Matilda. <laughs> so, okay, the next finished object I'll show is not something I made. It's something my mom made. Since the last episode, Kyle had a birthday. He turned 41. And so my mom made him a pair of socks. I'll show the pattern on the foot. So the pattern is from the Grocery Girls. Since it sucks, I assume it's Tracy, Tracy of the Grocery Girls that designed it. They had some sort of winter kit or something and it came with a pattern. That's so my mom used the pattern from that winter kit. And the yarn is, so Jody from the Grocery Girls. So side note, my mom and I are both big Grocery Girls fans. And I'm pretty sure like the entire world does too <laughs> that watches knitting podcasts. But I mean, their episodes will be like three hours long and I'm there for every minute of those three hours. I mean, I take a break. I don't sit down for an entire three hours, but. <laughs> so Jody of the Grocery Girls, she dyes yarn and I'm pretty sure that this is what that is. This is what my mom said. And I I know that Jody rebranded their yarn line. I think it was like to the Max Yarn Company. And now it's something after their cat. Something like, people are probably yelling at the, <laughs> at the YouTube right now. Like something like, I don't know. Something about their cat. And so the colorway was called Evergreen. And my dad, who's passed away, he, my mom had knit him a lot of socks. And I guess the, she said the red color came from a yarn left over from one of his socks. So it's nice to have, you know, a handmade gift. And my mom's knit Kyle a lot of socks at this point because he got a pair of socks for Christmas, a pair of socks for his birthday, and she's knit socks before that. So, <laughs> works in progress. Okay. So, I'm working on another beret. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't help myself. This time, I am not modifying the pattern. <laughs> I'm actually doing it as it's written. So I'm doing the increases as it suggests. I'm using the right weight of yarn. And because of that, I need to use stitch markers, which is why there's all these stitch markers. And they are Disney. I had a Christmas advent that was stitch markers. And these are a bunch of the stitch markers that were in my advent. Since I got 25 stitch markers, or 24 or something, I, I mean, they're not all on here, but I just picked a few. Okay, anyway, so this yarn is so pretty. It is Apple Yarns, and I wish I had the tag with me. I don't know what I did with it, because it's a very plump worsted. It almost feels... Aaron or something, but it, I do think it probably is worsted. And 
yeah, it's that's how it's showing up right on my screen here is what it looks like. It's a very beautiful, bright blue that's tonal. The colorway was called Have a Ball Crawl. Basically, at the start of the pandemic in 2020, there was some sort of like virtual yarn crawl that I, it was called Have a Ball Yarn Crawl or something. And I participated in it and Apple Yarns, I assume this is the colorway they had dyed for that. So this has been in my stash for a bit. And this braid is actually going to be a gift as well. I decided to do the classic silhouette instead of the dramatic silhouette. So it'll be a little bit smaller than that one, probably more like this size because I'm making it for Maddie from We Sure Needles. <laughs> she and Kristen were starting their Shala La Long, which I'm not participating in, but I wanted to watch their live anyway. And I, they were like cracking me up so much. And they ended up like talking about the books and braids now and their live. I don't really know why, but they were being really, really funny. Like, I mean, just, I was cry laughing. And in it, Maddie said that she was not, just couldn't visualize herself as somebody who would wear a beret. And so I think berets are for everybody. So I thought I'd make her a beret so that she might try a beret. <laughs> and it should be funny. We'll see if she watches this. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise, Maddie, I'm making you a braid to send you. <laughs> and I'm halfway. Braids go quick. Look, like that's about halfway, you know? Um, so when I, <laughs> just side note about the books and braid make along, it's not too late to join. It started January 9th, cast on, and I'm on my third braid. So it turns out they're really, you know, you can knit a quick braid and participate and the prizes are awesome. And it ends February 20th, I think. I'll link the details below in the down bar, but basically at the end of the make along, there's gonna be a Zoom and Shelby and the bookstore, like Shelby from Shelby and the bookstore, she will be leading a discussion about the book Real Men Knit, but I would welcome you to come to the Zoom anyway, because I was just thinking it would, like if you didn't read the book, but you have a break because I do think it'd be really fun to show up on Zoom, take a group picture with us all wearing our berets. And then if you have to leave, that's fine. But yeah, I just think it would be so fun to have a picture of us wearing our berets together. Anyway, so <laughs> sorry, Maddie, <laughs> if you didn't want a beret. <laughs> I'm so, I don't know, I think it's so funny that I'm making her a beret, but I think it's adorable. <laughs> And I think she loves blue, for at least if I can tell from her podcast. So I just think that color is perfect for her. So I'm just thrilled. Okay. I am slowly working on my red mitt. Speaking of Maddie and Kristen from the We Share Needles podcast, they started the red mitt cardigan by Amba O'Brien at the same time as me. And they're finished and theirs look amazing. It's truly inspirational. I was looking at their thumbnails on YouTube and watching their videos where they're wearing them and they just look gorgeous. And so it definitely has like really reinvigorated me to want to make this. But I will say I'm enjoying the process of this so much, which I will discuss a little bit more, but I'm not in a rush to finish it because I'm just really enjoying the process. So one part of the process, uh, process I've enjoyed is like making this basket that's just devoted to this project. And I have half of the rad vent done. So I might have shown this on the last podcast. So this is one, like, this is part of it. And last episode, two weeks ago, I had just started the cuff. And so now I have gotten the cuff finished, it's twisted rib. Maddie and Kristen did theirs in two by two rib because they like two by two rib and I think it looks really great with that. I did a twisted rib and I like the way that looks too. This is this I'm doing what the pattern calls for because I liked it, but, and yeah, so I have those four colors. This color is called 
in the air, I think. And this color is Sweet Dreams. This color is Winter Blue. And this color is Hello Hellebore. Oh, and this is Perfectly Adequate. I love how I told you the colorway of names, but not the dyer. <laughs> the dyer is Stress Mitts. So Stacy from Stress Mitts. This is my second year getting an advent from her. And I love her aesthetic. Like, I just, every one of these colors, they look good. It's very cohesive very cohesive advent like all the colors are different but somehow go together i mean so i i am knitting this in the order that i opened it so like this was day one i think it was cranberry day two was like mint chocolate chip citrus oh i'm going to my memory garland i'll stop but like <laughs> like they They look good together all this it's like I had planned it even though I was just doing it in the order that it was opened I did swatch for this just so I know here's my swatch and this swatch is actually I did ribbing looks like I didn't so I'm seeing a mistake in my swatch now I did one by one instead of twisted ribbing um, but anyway, when I did the swatch for it, I actually used yarn from last year's advent. And in a colorway that like I just didn't see myself using a ton of. So, because I assumed it was the same base. And I did that because I was nervous before I started. The reason why I'm sharing that is I just want to show you. There in e there's just a lot of yarn left. So like when I finish my advent, I'm going to have all this, all this. Every time you knit a stripe, there's yarn left. You can see I like this one smaller than this one because obviously the circumference is increasing, but so you use more yarn, but I mean, there's still just so much yarn left that, I mean, I treasure this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do something really cool with the scraps because I love how I'm thinking about the scraps when I haven't even finished the rat, rat bed yet, but I will finish the rat bed. I love it. Okay. There's more whips. Do I have like 20 something whips? Yes. I'm going to show you all 20. No, these are all the things I worked on in the last two weeks. So worked on the beret, worked on the rat bed. I also cast on another pair of socks. And what's funny about that? It's funny for so many reasons. First of all, it's funny because last episode I was like, more sweaters, less socks. What do I do? Cast on another pair of socks. The heart wants what the heart wants, I guess. <laughs> Two, it's funny that I cast on another pair of socks because I have at least six, at least six single, single socks right now that like need a second sock. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. it it is what it is and it'll look familiar this mohair so I had a whole skein of mohair left from this sweater and in October on a flight I had cast on a muscleberg and I ended up tearing it out because I didn't like the gauge that I was knitting my muscleberg at it was too dense it needed to be a looser gauge and this is like a sparkle yarn I think from fiber company it's in a Harry Potter colorway Like it, like this had a Harry Potter name, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, I'm holding these together. A, a mohair and a sparkle. What? Holding them together to make a cozy sock. You can tell I have like a, you can tell I have a, a vibe, a color, a color aesthetic here. Like this pink is everything and even though this is not what I knit the sweater out of it's very very consistent <laughs> so anyway I'm holding these together and I'm making a cozy sock 
let me know if you've ever knit yourself a mohair sock. <laughs> I love mohair and now I'm making mohair socks, it turns out. So yeah, if you hold fingering mohair together, it makes a DK gauge. So yeah, there it is. And I'm knitting it on a nine inch needle. I am doing like just a self-drafted sort of situation here. Like you can tell that this is a very tall ribbing and that's because I actually really like tall ribbing on a sock. So I made it extra long, put it in a little pearl blip and then I'm doing a very textured situation here. What I'm doing here would not be for everybody because there is purling, quite a bit of purling and not everybody loves purling. I could care less about purling. I like knitting. I like purling. So, yeah, started that. What am I gonna do with mohair socks? Wear them? I don't know. Like, I'm really enjoying my hand knit socks lately, like a lot wearing them. And so, I've been spending a ton of time at home. And so, the thought of having like a fuzzy pair of socks to wear around my house, maybe out and about, like, it sounds super appealing to me. So, that's that whip. It's hard to believe it, but I worked out a fourth thing in all this, <laughs> which is, and you're gonna laugh when you see this yarn, <laughs> which is again, some leftover mohair from this sweater <laughs> and then some leftover sweater yarn. <laughs> and I'm making a mini shawl, like a doll size shawl. Here we go. Okay. So it's like striped. It's going to be crescent shaped and it's striped with this color and then the mohair and then it goes into lace. So the reason why I'm making a mini shawl is I took a class, a two day class through Vogue Knitting Live. It was my first time taking a class through Vogue Knitting Live and I mean they've been doing this the whole pandemic having like lots of Vogue Knitting Live classes. I've never signed up for one. I don't know why. And so I finally did. And when I decided to do it, I don't know, the class, I did not go into it looking for a shawl design class. That, that's not what happened. I went in like, just like, I'm going to look for whatever class sounds interesting and, and what was open. And I don't know, the shawl design class just sounded interesting to me. So I signed up for the shawl design class, which was a two day class with Ash Alberg, I think that's their name. And the, I'll link their website below. And also they are Sunflower Knit on Instagram. They're from Canada and it was the best class. I mean, it was really fun. It was a lecture class, which isn't necessarily like, um, as a learner, like, the best thing for me. I enjoy discussing things. I do enjoy doing things. You know, as a math major in college, I was lectured to a lot and I would, well, that I was being lectured to like do math problems when I was bored, you know? And so it's like the same thing. I was like, if I got a little bored in like the lecture, I would just knit. That's what I did during the class. And the materials were awesome because they basically went over like the construction of shawls and tips about shape and blocking and fiber choice and so when the lecture was going on I was also sort of like exploring like this was doing this and I think it's really fun to make a mini shawl maybe I'll make a bigger shawl out of this or maybe it'll just be for Matilda American Girl dolls. <laughs> and oh, I would like to wrap this up and get this off my needles, but I did want to share like just sort of like a lesson learned with the mini shawl. If I am to do this, if I end up doing this in a larger size, I will chart it out because <laughs> This lace turned out, I'm almost embarrassed to show it. This lace turned out terrible. 
Okay, this lace is, is this is not what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Basically, like I had a lace chart that was in this dictionary that I was going to insert after these. And some math, which is what I love, needs to be done when you're shaping for the crescent. And I thought in my head, I'll just do the math in my head. I don't need to rechart this out. I can just do this in my head. <laughs> no, I cannot do it in my head. <laughs> it's basic arithmetic and I don't know what I did. I, like, I, don't, I literally don't know what I messed up on, but I did something, I messed something up, which is why it doesn't look that good. So, <laughs> so if I do a bigger one for myself, I'm going to chart it out. <laughs> in Excel or something. And so basically my thought is that I would do like a couple of rows in this and a couple of rows in this, a lace panel, more than a couple, like just oscillate so it's striped. Do a lace panel with the mohair. Return to this. Do a lace panel with this. Return to this. Do a lace panel with this turn the stripes and then do like a ruffle. I'm not gonna do that for the doll. If I did it kind of bigger, if that's what I wanna do. But for the doll, I'm just gonna finish my lace, do some more striping and then do the ruffle. I think that's what I'm gonna do for the mini version. But I love, I love swatching. So like making a mini shawl is like swatching for your shawl. <laughs> and I loved it. So yeah. <laughs> okay. And the last work in progress is I started a needle felting project. Basically I got a needle felting kit for Christmas to make a dog and I started it. I did not make it very far. Needle felting is taking more time than I realized it would. Matilda was like, let's make this dog. And so we started it together and yeah, it's really, I worked on it for like maybe two hours and I'll pop a picture in because I didn't bring out all the fiber and the mold and all that here. So anyway, so I've worked on a lot of things, <laughs> but I, it, you know, if I focus on one thing, I might finish more, <laughs> but, but I had fun working on all those things. So it's fine. So End of February is the Rose City Yarn Crawl, which is a Portland-based yarn crawl. Every year, the amount of yarn stores that are in Portland changes, <laughs> sadly. And like when I first moved out here, I remember I was super excited to visit a store called Happy Knits, and it's closed. And so, you know, yarn businesses sometimes go out of business. New ones open up too, which is awesome, but it's Every year it's been different with the amount of yarn stores that are in the Rosie Yarn Crawl. Essentially there's a passport and you can go to the yarn store and at each store they have a knitting pattern and a crochet pattern that you can get for free if you make a purchase or you can buy the patterns if you want. And they usually have kits for those patterns and then there's usually trunk shows and it's really fun. Some years I've gone to all of the yarn stores and some like when Matilda was like three months old, I think I only went to two or three or something. So it just depends on the year. And so I just wanted to pop over here and ask a couple questions. One question is, is are you in the area? Do you live in the area? Are you going to the Rose City Yarn Crawl? Let me know because I'd love to like meet you or say hi if you are. Um, the second question is, if you don't live in the area, would you be interested in a vlog around the Rosie Yarn Crawl? I was thinking about making a vlog. I know vlogs aren't like everybody's cup of tea. So anyway, if I'd ask those two questions. And then for sort of the well-worn knits part of the segment, I thought I'd show two shawls that I have made as part of the Rosity Yarn Crawl Mystery Knit Along. Each year they have a mystery knit along or mystery crochet along. And I've done them two years in a row and I took a break this year. I 
thought about doing it because it did, did coincide with the Shalala Long from We Share Needles podcast, but I just, well, I'll explain. <laughs> so for the 2020 yarn crawl, this is the shawl I made. It was just a basic triangle. It comes out to be like almost like a perfectly symmetrical triangle. I think it was knit from this end here to here. And you can see it's just various stitch patterns that were provided. And it turned out when I first knit it like a little bit smaller than I like my shawls. I like my shawls kind of like a small blanket. And so because of that, I really, I did a couple things. One thing is I added more to it than the pattern. So like I had yarn left at the end of the pattern and I kept going. So mine, just I kept going with it. And then the other thing I did, since it turned out smaller than I had like my shawls, is I added these big beautiful tassels on it because tassels add a little weight, which I thought would like help me wear it. And so now I actually do wear this shawl a lot. And yeah, and the fun thing about it when I did it is it was my very first mystery knit along. And I just pulled from my stash because the Rosa Yarn Crawl Mystery Knit Alongs, they only take two skeins of yarn. So it was like perfect for like grabbing from my stash. So this is Madeline Tosh Light. This color was called Telegraph Wire, which I love. I love this color. And then this color was called Winter Wheat and I had it left over from a sweater I had made. And so I love this now. At the time I was like, about it. Oh yeah, there's a tassel down here. And so this basically made it in 2020, went on the Rosa Yarn Crawl, and then the weekend after was like, that was like, stay home, COVID's spreading everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> so this is like my last memory. Like this is my last memory of the before times. <laughs> and yeah, and I wear it a lot. And so I was glad I did it. What I didn't like about the shawl is you can't really see it because of my color choice, but there's mosaic knitting and I just don't like mosaic knitting. A lot of people say it's a really good entryway for color knitting because you don't carry any strands behind, there's no floats. I just don't like the process of, of mosaic knitting. And there was quite a bit of mosaic knitting in here and I actually got really sick of it. So at the end, I just stopped doing it. And you can't really tell because of the color choices I chose. So, so I didn't really particularly like mosaic knitting, but that is what happens when you do mystery knit along. You don't know, you don't know what you're gonna be knitting. It's a mystery. <laughs> so last year, I loved the idea of like, that you're knitting something along with other people for the Rosie Aaron Crow. So last year, I did the Rosie Aaron Crow again, and I love the shape of the shawl. Look at that. Do you see those hearts? And, and it turned out quite large. And yeah, and I learned a lot with this. Like I got to do brioche. I got to do some brioche increases. And I got to do my first, is it Latvian braid? So that's really fun. And I love a good heart, especially with Valentine's Day coming up. And I have a shawl that has like hearts on it. I love the size of it. I pulled from my stash. So the navy blue is a Malintosh sock in Fathom. And then the pink was a Wonderland yarns, maybe in Pink Flamingo or something. But it was old stash. Like I had this Blue Fathom from like 2011 or 2012 or something. Like it, it was, it felt so good to knit something that was in my stash. It just, it was so good. So that was all positive. My only like 
con, the only like negative was, what was in it again? Mosaic knitting. And I do love the way it turned out. Like it looks, I love hearts. It's very bold. I will have this awesome piece for Valentine's Day or all year long. I just, you know, I do think it looks really good. But if I'm being completely honest, I just don't like mosaic knitting. I literally don't like it. <laughs> like if it was the first knitting I learned, I probably wouldn't be a knitter. I just don't enjoy slipping stitches. Like <laughs> it's such a weird thing, but I just, I just don't. So this year I decided to not do it because I was like two years in a row, there's been mosaic knitting. I was like, and I look back at past designs and I was like, it seems to be a trend that in these mystery knit lungs, they include mosaic knitting and the rosé yarn crawl. And sure enough, so I waited. I was like, I was on the fence, like maybe I'll do it or not. So I waited and clue two, I guess I'm spoiling you if you are gonna hop on it at this point, but clue two has mosaic knitting. So it's just, it's not for me. <laughs> so about mosaic knitting, I have a rosé yarn crawl story. <laughs> So there's a popular yarn store on Instagram, local yarn store, and like, and it's in the Portland area called the Starlight Knitting Society. You've probably heard of it. And it's been part of the Rosé Yarn Crawl. So when Matilda was three months old and she was a baby, so this was 2018, I go on the rosy yarn crawl i can only go to a handful of stores because i have a three month old and you know they they expire they need to go home they need to sleep whatever so we went to naughty lamb and we went to starlight Nang society in 2018 new mom nicole she didn't instagram like i didn't even know that there was like a huge com community of knitting people i didn't have a clue i it's hard to believe that but like i, I didn't even know didn't know. I didn't even watch podcasts at the time. Like I just was like, I don't know what I did, <laughs> but I was knitting and very into knitting, but I just didn't know about the podcast, I think, and, and the community that's out there. So I go to Starlight Knitting Society and there's this big table, beautiful yarn. And you've heard this yarn, it's been cycled yarn, but I hadn't heard about it the time because I wasn't on Instagram and didn't watch podcasts and there wasn't a lot of signs out for it yet then and there's all this yarn and I just kind of knew I wanted it because it was so beautiful but I didn't know what I would make with it or what and so I just like bought two random skeins not really thinking about it like I don't think I would today knowing what I know about it I don't think I would have picked out these two skeins but and there was no prices listed on it, just side so, so I didn't even know it was like expensive yarn. It was the only two things I was getting. And I get up to the counter to pay and they like tell, tell me how much it is. And I was like, whoa. And I just paid for it and got in the car. And I remember feeling guilty about it. And then the funny thing happened. Like a week later, two weeks later, I got an email and I actually won a raffle, like a big basket of yarn. From, I was the third place basket winner at a Starlight Knitting Society. And I remember being like, oh, it doesn't matter that I like felt guilty about spending all this money on these two skeins of yarn. Like it all like, it was like, I don't know. It felt like really good karma or vibes. Like it just, it was, I don't know. I just ended up with this epic prize and it was a really, really cool prize. Anyway, so here are my two skeins I picked from Spin Cycle when I didn't even know what Spin Cycle was. <laughs> So it's, it's, if you are not familiar with Spin Cycle, it is a sort of, I guess, like a woolen, like the yarn is dyed in the wool and then spun, I think. Whereas a lot of yarn is like spun and then dyed. This is opposite, it's dyed in the wool and then spun. So that's why it has this kind of marled look. And like, as you knit it, it changes colors. So you can tell like these, if you're gonna knit a project that has these two together, and this is maybe not the best combination because it doesn't have a high contrast but and again I didn't know what I was doing so I bought this what well, a pattern maybe I got the pattern with it I don't know but 
a cowl. I'm making a cowl. And there's a pattern in here. Yes, it's called the, maybe it came with it. Issa or Issa cowl. It's a beautiful cowl. But you know what it is? Mosaic knitting. And I've decided I'm going to rip it out. So this has been a whip since 2018. I just dislike mosaic knitting that, that much so that it's been sitting. It's sitting. And I would knit on it and I would only do like five rows and then I'd be like, I need a break. I just need to do, knit something that's going to give me joy. And it's just such a tiny project. And you can tell I'm actually almost done. Like I could just persevere through it. But I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to rip it out. But this yarn is really awesome. <laughs> so I should do something else with it. And I actually don't even know if it's going to be the same project. Like I could do like a hat with just this or... I wonder if I have some labels in here. Yes. So the blue is called Tangled Up in Blue. I'm 100% American wool. It's only 200 yards, so it's not a lot. And then this one that's got like purples, reds, and blues, and greens. It's called Ruination. So you should give me a suggestion of something I should do with this if you have one. <laughs> Like if you're saying this and you've got an idea of what I should do, I would love to hear it because I'm actually going to not put this away. Like I'm going to, like after I podcast, I usually put my stuff away. I'm not going to put this away. I'm going to leave it out and just rip it out <laughs> and do something else that'll give me joy with this really nice yarn. So... If you're going to the Rosie Yarn Crawl, let me know. Let me know what stores you're going to, stuff like that. I would love to know. I had to take my, I had to take my bray off. I was getting warm. <laughs> Cashmere's warm. This segment, I started a segment that was like sort of professor's pearls, pearls, or the professor's pearls, like my kind of reflections. So one thing I have been reflecting on this week has been the idea of knitting fast versus knitting slow. So sometimes I see like from watching podcasts and from looking at Instagram, I think like, gosh, I just want to knit more, more, more. I want to knit all the things and I wish I knit faster so that I could knit more things. And I, you know, when you think about why we knit or, or like what got us into knitting, and it's often not this idea of like producing things fast. Like if we wanted like gloves, we could go to the store and get them or buy socks. Like like the idea of slowing down and sitting down your couch cozy, like knitting socks and watching a movie or reading your book and knitting socks or the idea of like slowing down for yourself to make yourself something is inherently slow. And so I, it's really interesting this like kind of like these two things that are always like these two tensions of like Want the purpose of knitting is to slow down and relax for me and I think for a lot of us and paired with like this idea of like there's so many amazing things I just want to do more and more and more so this idea of like fast and slow are always sort of like kind of pulling on each other and so I just wanted to share a little bit about like my math education teaching world um you know, I've been teaching math for a long time, since my early 20s, and I've been a student of math my entire life. And there's this sort of inherent thing that I feel like I always have to like break of my students, which is when they come to my class, they often think that being good at math means being fast at math. 
and they think like unless they can do math quickly and correctly like they are not good at math and that's just not true like math as a field is like not about being fast surprise it's really not um, you know it's 2021 you walk around with your phone or an inherent calculator it's basically a computer so you know you can type in things very quickly even on the internet there's like free software like to do calculus type like procedures and so you know like being fast isn't what math is about really in math like thinking deeply, thinking creatively, thinking logically, being able to critique other people's reasoning, justifying your own thinking. Like there's just so much more. That's like deep, beautiful things about math that make math, math. And it's not about being right. Oftentimes you've got to be wrong several times before you're right. And so this idea that like knitting, you're not a, like the idea of like, you're not a good knitter because you produce something. And you're not a good knitter if you're right all the time. You're going to make mistakes. You're not a good knitter if you're like super, super fast. It's not about being fast. It's about something else, right? And like any knitting is good knitting. Like any knitting that's helping you de-stress or is helping you enjoy life more, like that's good knitting. And so that <laughs> made me think about slow fashion and the importance of it and like this sort of slow movements in the world and so you've probably heard of this book this is a book I own and really enjoy and it's called slow knitting a journey from sheep to stitch and the it's just a very beautiful book I might have even sh I I love it so much it's possible I've shown it on the podcast already I can't remember but basically it talks about like yarn companies that are like like slower um, I think you know I think a lot of us try to support like independent makers and a lot of them are part of these slow movements not all but um so it talks about different yarn companies like this is a picture of bare naked wools there's little excerpts about sort of the slow movement in it and then there's also patterns like here's a cabled sweater i have a bookmark in it where i'm at so i've started it cover to cover and that's where i'm at and i'm ironically and purposely reading this slowly and so yeah so <laughs> for the giveaway today oops sorry is it the so for the giveaway today I want to know what's something that you enjoy knitting slowly or what's something that you would like to knit slowly and so my example is my red vent I truly love this so much I'm just enjoying every single stitch ounce of it like the basket I'm enjoying the basket it's in my pattern I laminated my pattern this is the chart I'm enjoying like the process of like marking off my colors and I actually like write the colors in with like a wet erase marker and like check them off and I just don't feel in a rush to finish this because I'm enjoying the process so much I just want it to last course I could knit another <laughs> and keep making that process last because I do have other minis but I just I, this is my example of like something that I'm just like I'm not trying to rush myself I'm just trying to enjoy it and yeah so I'd love to know for you what's something like that for you that you've made that you just enjoyed it so much that you just wanted it to last a long time I sometimes like that about books if you don't have a project like that, like I would just love to hear a little bit about your slowing down and knitting. Like what's part of slowing down and knitting that you like? Oh, and so the giveaway. <laughs> I was just thinking about slowing down and just romanticizing it and didn't show you what the giveaway is. So uh, over Christmas break, I visited my friend Kelly's yarn store. I did not buy a lot, but I saw these two little dinosaur progress keepers. 
and I love dinosaurs and I love progress keepers. And so I was thinking it'd be really fun to have like a sort of friend to share one of these with because I love both of these dinosaurs. It looks like a stegosaurus and a brontos brontosaurus or I don't know. It'd be a diplodocus, I suppose. Um, anyway, I was thinking that I could share one of these and we could both have dinosaur stitch markers together. And so, and something I could easily pop in a card and put in the mail pretty, pretty inexpensively to nearly anywhere. Um, so anyway, yeah, so just let me know um, about your slow learning journey and something that you enjoy that's slow or that you would like to enjoy or the process or anything. So dream knitting, because I'm enjoying the ribbon so much, my dream knitting has really shifted towards what's my next scrappy project. And that, you know, I follow Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady and she's very into kind of resurfacing some of her scrappy blankets. I don't think I will be a scrappy blanket maker. I just know myself, but I've been dreaming about scrappy sweaters. I mentioned one last week. I'm just gonna mention it again this week which is the V-Back Tee by Jamie Hoffman. I've been thinking about that. I think it's a long sleeved shirt in the picture on Ravelry, but I've been thinking about it as a short sleeve sort of summer shirt for myself. Like I could start that as soon as this is done and have it in the spring summer here. So I've been really thinking about that a lot. And my other dream knitting has been the sea glass sweater the DK version. I have not a lot, but enough DK in my stash that like I could start it and whenever I have some DK left over or worsted, put it in. And I have already purchased the pattern. So I'm like a little bit committed and I've printed it off and I've been like looking at it. I think my hesitations around starting it have been that I need to finish this one first before I start another scrappy sweater. I'm a little nervous about one by one um, color work like will I keep the steam up for one by one color work and yeah so anyway I do think that that would be really fantastic to do and I've been thinking about a scrappy love note like I think that would be really cool too so anyway those are my dream knitting just still thinking about scrappy sweaters <laughs> and okay I have gotten two acquisitions since the last podcast and it's funny because I really did not intend on purchasing anything but here's what happened so Chelsea Lux had a sale and it was like a really significant sale and so but I missed out on it like she announced it on Instagram or something and there was like a colorway that was like a really bright pink like this that was part of the sale and I didn't get that. And this was actually all that was left. It was like jeans and stilettos. And so I purchased this and not because it was like my number one choice, but just because it was such a good deal. And it's like, basically it comes with like a slub yarn and a second skein of mohair and they match and they're all together. And my two thoughts around this are that I do think this would be a really cool beret. And she has a beret pattern that's like Chelsea in Paris or something. And so I could do that. And I could, in the past, felt a little guilty about it because it was two full skeins, which makes it quite expensive to make just a little beret. But now I got it on sale. So anyway, um, so that was one thought. The other thought is that this could be really cool for this mini, I am making this little mini shawl. Like this could be a cool shawl for myself using that same sort of self-drafted pattern. And so, yeah, I keep going back and forth about those two. And if I did the shawl, I was thinking that would be a bigger project and I would probably finish it around the fall time. And this would be like the perfect fall shawl. So yeah, I think that would be really cool. 
the other acquisition is a some more cashmere from Clinton Hill <laughs> for another beret for myself. So after I made this beret and just loved it, I was like, I know that I need to make another beret, like need to make another beret. Like I knew it, but I also like expected myself to buy the pink. They have a hot pink color. But I could not get it out of my head about a yellow beret. I think on the show Emily in Paris I saw a yellow beret. I'm fairly certain. I'll, I'll Google image search see if I can find an image. So I had this yellow beret in my head and then I just couldn't get it out of my head. And so I'm making myself a yellow beret. As soon as I finish Maddie's blue beret, I'm casting on a yellow beret for myself. So I'm thrilled, thrilled. And so I ordered that. And then inside my package was this beautiful bag. And I don't have a lot of knitting bags, so this was really special to get this. And it's really structured and it says Clinton Hill. And I just sort of feel like, okay, now I need to buy more cashmere to put inside of here <laughs> so I can use this more. I just, it's really sturdy and cool looking. I love it. So that's my acquisition since last episode. All right, for the sip, sip, knit segment, I just Took a little break from recording and made some fresh tea and I'm drinking David's tea. I feel like I'm always drinking David's tea in here. <laughs> I'm recording in the afternoon and I tend to drink my coffee in the morning and my tea in the afternoon. So, so I'm having David's tea confetti cupped cake and I took a really quick little picture of it for you because it's one of those teas that tastes delicious if you like a little sweeter tea but looks just don't look at it just don't think about it it looks like I don't know dirty water <laughs> but it's delicious it's very sweet and cozy I love confetti cupcake I just don't enjoy the way it looks I like the way it looks the tea but then you put water in it it's I don't know <laughs> So for Sip Sip Knit, I tell you about confetti cupcake tea and how delicious it was. And also I wanted to share something I've been really enjoying the past couple weeks since I last recorded, which is I've been really enjoying getting a hot beverage, whether it's tea, coffee, or hot cocoa, and flipping through some knitting books that I checked out from my library. I think I've told you that I love the public library a ton and my public library is incredible. And so two of the books that I'm gonna show you, I like requested, like I put in a library request for, and one I just stumbled upon at the library. So the library, my library has a section, it's called new, and it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a new book, it just means it's new to the library. And so it says new on it. And you can't renew these ones. When it's new, it's, you get it for two weeks and you need to return it. And they have all kinds of new books that come in. And I noticed they had Harry Potter Knitting Magic. I showed a similar book last episode, but it was the Disney book and I own that one. And this was at my library, the Harry Potter one. And so I just, I read the Harry Potter series when I, I was in high school and undergraduate college. And so it's very nostalgic for me. And I just really have enjoyed flipping through this, uh, this book. And there is a pair of color work socks in here that I think are hilarious and awesome. <laughs> so in Harry Potter, there's this thing called the mortar, mortar. Okay, sorry. I'm saying it wrong. In Harry Potter, there's this Marauder's Map, 
my husband Kyle was just correcting me. <laughs> and anyway, this is mischief managed, which is like one of the code words for the map. And it's on the foot of the socks. And then on the actual sock, it says, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. And I mean, I've just done two pairs of socks. I have like a little bit of color work in them. I've never done a completely like from the top down to the toe, but this is tempting ways. Although I have to return it soon. So, but I think it was, you know, you could simply check this out and knit something from it. But also it can be nice for your library to explore books you might be interested in purchasing, but maybe you're unsure of. And so, yes, that was one. There's lots of fun patterns in here. So the two that I had requested and I went to go pick up were kind of stitch dictionaries because I knew I was taking that shawl design class at Voganang Live. And so I knew that I wanted to like flip through some stitch dictionaries for some inspiration. And so these were the two I picked. The Knitting All Around Stitch Dictionary. And it is spiral bound, which is kind of nice. And I will just show I mean, it's just like any such dictionary, but this is the lace pattern I was attempting to do without adjusting the, the chart. It's called the Bricklayer's Lace. Just thought it was nice rectangles on their side and I really liked it. And I thought, oh, I can just easily do the math on the sides for the increases and I did not. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to try again. I'm seeing maybe not trying that lace when we try a different lace. I don't know. We'll see. And there's this one, Japanese knitting stitches. There's a lot of these, you know, there's the, what is it, the Japanese knitting stitch Bible, like one with 250 stitches. This one's 200. Um, there's several of them and they have gorgeous, gorgeous sort of all kinds of things like here, like this and then and so I just wanted to flip through for some inspiration. So yeah, I even found a page that had like borders in it. I thought that was really fun. So I so yeah, I might pick one of those for like the edge of my shawl. So yeah, so I've really been just sort of enjoying these books, the hot beverage, being cozy. We've been spending a lot of time at home for the past couple of weeks. And so I will transition to personal now. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. And so I'll share maybe what I've been read, what I've read and I'm reading, especially with like the books and brain make along going on. I'll just incorporate some books in here. Since the last podcast, I finished reading Little Fires Everywhere. Oh my goodness. I was getting very angry through that book. There's a character, Mrs. Richardson. I won't go into all of it, but she was making me really mad. And at the end of the book, I was still really mad. I won't give away anything, but she wasn't very likable to me. And I didn't have a lot of empathy for Mrs. Richardson. She was, and I feel like one, one thing that's important to me is like growing and learning. And I felt like I didn't see a lot of growth in that ca character person. This was very frustrating. And I think because of that, I, when I finished reading that, I had another one of those books on whole library and I didn't like by the same author I didn't take it out because I was like I just need something really light and easy and so I don't normally read romance but you'll see two romance books here so I'd finished reading started and finished since the last time I recorded 
a book called The Girl I Was Before, which I think is the first book in a series. I don't know how I ended up with this book. I It was on my Kindle and I got it for free. I don't know if I got free through Amazon First Reads or if I got it free through like Amazon Prime somehow. I don't know, but I ended up getting this book for free. So it's just randomly on my Kindle. And very light reading. If you're looking for a romance novel, you can read in like two days. That's very light fluff. Like this is the book for you. Um, I felt a little bit like good that I read that after Little Fires Everywhere because it had like resolve and a happy ending. <laughs> but I also like was also frustrated in that book because the main character has some kind of bad things happen to her. I won't give anything away. She ends up being kind of a divorcee, like her husband she's married to is like a terrible person and and then other bad things happen. And uh, I was like, I just need something good <laughs> to happen. And so it did, it had a happy ending. So anyway, I think I read that in a few days. It was just what I needed. And I do read lots of books at the same time. I will say that. One, because it's just kind of who I am. You saw all my whips that I worked on in the past like two weeks. I just, I like to have a lot of things going. Also, I listen to audiobooks on walks, I read my Kindle, and I like a hardcover book. And so all of that is like the perfect storm for supporting me to read multiple books at a time. I won't show you everything I'm reading right now, but I'll show you my two main books right now. <laughs> my two main books are Real Men Knit, which is part of the Books and Berets Make Along. You can read any book as part of the Books and Berets Make Along but this is like the book that's going to be part of the book discussion on the Zoom. And yeah, so I'm partway through. I've been like treasuring it, not rushing through it, kind of, you can see the theme here. Um, so I read like a chapter a day and it is a romance, like full on romance novel. And I'm just not used to reading that. I'm more of a fantasy person slash self-help slash read heavy kind of books <laughs> so yeah like this is totally out of my comfort zone but I really like the characters and I'm rooting for them and that's fun so yes and this is also going to be part of a series I think so it's really exciting because I love series so this this is a romance theme so I've been reading a lot of Sarah J Maas since last year. And I would say 2021, I would have to say she's probably my favorite author. At the, oh, it's, it's 2022. Oh my goodness. In 2022 right now, I would say Sarah J Maas is probably my favorite author because I just, honestly, it's all I want to do is read Sarah J Maas. I have to like tell myself, Nicole, you should read other things. So I'm reading multiple of her series. I'm also reading her Throne of Glass series. I don't know. I think I might be on the sixth or seventh book in that series. I don't remember. I'm on the Dawn of Tower series. Um, I'm on the Dawn of Tower. I'll have to look what book that is. Anyway, I really like her fantasy books. This series is part of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. And the first Court of Thorns and Roses book I've read like three times. <laughs> I've moved on to the second book, which is A Court of Mists and Fury. And I don't know if I started this. I think I started this the last time we chatted. I don't know. But you can see I'm quite far. I'm on page 420. And it's fantasy. And it is, and the Court of Thorn and Roses is also a love story, like a romance. Like it's definitely more adult than the Throne of Glass series. So, I mean, it's technically young adult, A Court of Throne of Roses in that section, but it feels adult to me. Um, <laughs> so, the Throne of Glass series is sort of like, I feel like a fantasy spin on Cinderella. The Court of Thrones and Roses series is a fantasy spin on Beauty and the Beast. And I just, so good. So good. Okay. 
personal life. I have a very fun story to tell, which is I first heard about zebra yarns. It's a self-striping yarn, zebra yarns. On um, the One More Rogue podcast was hosted by Kay, the crazy sock lady, and Carrie from Stolen Minutes. They're friends and they have this podcast. And I think I think Carrie, she was like knitting this black and white yarn with like a red heel. That's when I first heard about it. And I've heard about it since and what. And it kind of shows up all over my Instagram. So for Christmas, I bought my mom a 12 Days of Christmas zebra yarn advent. Or I guess it's not an advent, it was the 12 Days of Christmas. So we started on Christmas Day and went. So I was really excited to give her that. And I had ordered it and I noticed it was being shipped from like cl close to where I live. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I, on Instagram, DM'd Anna from Zebra Yarns and we've been chatting since then, just occasionally. Well, anyway, we ended up meeting up and we have so much in common, like, like even more than knitting really. And also like family lives and, um, yeah, so our kids play together. We went to a museum together and it was really cool. It was just super fun. So, okay, for other personal life things, it's been, you know, it's January and it's, so it's just been so fun to like get back to routines. I feel like in December with like festive things and traveling, like I, I feel like, like, relishes routine and so we like it fell out of our routines and so this past couple weeks have just been sitting in our routines and I've been loving it like Matilda every week takes her violin lessons at a certain time and does swim lessons at a certain time and does dance lessons at a certain time and I love taking her to those things and I like it just fills me with so much joy and and I love that consistency. So that's just been so fun. We even this Sunday resumed our pizza Sundays. We used to do homemade pizzas in our uni pizza maker every Sunday. And we got out of that routine in December and I've been missing it. And so we're just like getting in those routines. And so that's been so fun. Um, and the other thing I... For the pandemic, I would take group fitness classes like at least four or five times a week. I was just always taking group fitness and it was like a place where I just really felt a lot of endorphins and just felt really good. And when the pandemic started in 2020, I obviously stopped doing group fitness. I mean, I'm pretty sure our gym closed down and it reopened and I didn't feel comfortable. And, and I've actually started going, since I last recorded, I've started going back to my, not all, just going two days a week, but to some of my group fitness. I'm wearing face mask and anyway, I've been enjoying that and yeah. So out of routine, the past two weekends, Kyle, Matilda and I have done some hikes and maybe I'll throw in some pictures here. Two weekends ago on Kyle's birthday weekend, we did a very tiny hike that's very close to our house, like just a few miles. And it's, um, I don't even know, it might only be a mile or two. It's just basically up a hill and down a hill, but it goes through a creek and it's wooded and it's got a nice view. We live sort of out in wine country, so it's got a nice view of some vineyards. And um, so, yeah, so that was fun. And then this weekend, I heard that they had opened, also close to us, that they had like opened a new hike park. I and mean, that's not like normal for there to be like a new space for hiking, but there was, and it's called Shehalem Ridge. And yeah, so we went out, it was wildly busy <laughs> and like, like the parking, there was like nowhere to park. But when we were out like hiking, it was, we weren't hardly around anybody. And so it's just, I don't know. <laughs> and it was just such a great hike because it was accessible to so many kinds of people. Like 
people with horses were able to, like there was a stop for horses, people with bikes, there, that trail we were on, somebody with a wheelchair was going along it. And so it just, it made my heart so happy that like so many people were like outside and it was accessible to a lot of people and child friendly. And so, yeah, so we went and at one point, and then there's, it was like also very like accommodating. You can make it short, like just like two miles or you can make it longer. And we got to a viewpoint and we could, and it was a clear day and it was sunny and warm and we could see three mountains. We saw Hood, Adams and St. Helens. And it was just incredible. And I tried to take some pictures and videos because I was just like, this is so amazing. And it's just so interesting. Like a picture just doesn't capture like something like that. Like, I don't know, like I kept trying to take videos and pictures. I was like, this is just so breathtaking. And like everyone just like, just was not as epic <laughs> as being there. <laughs> and yeah, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> and like usual, this episode's long and I overshared. <laughs> so anyway, before you go, I just want to remind you, if you're interested in the sweater show and share idea, I would love for you to fill out the Google form. There's so a basically way a Google form works is it's a link and you will click on the link and you'll just kind of fill it out and you should be able to do it on your phone or computer. And yeah. And I suppose I will look at the results of it two weeks from now when I record my next podcast and hopefully I'll have an announcement then based on like sort of the response from that Google Doc. So anyway, thank you so, so much for coming to this space and being part of this community. And I'd love to hear from you. Bye.